Now that we've created our 2D plan view, it's time to talk about how we select our fixtures and work with the different attributes. So at its basics, we notice that we can touch a group, make a selection over our screen here, type a group number, type a fixture number, and get what we'd like. There are a few other ways that we can refine this process a little. And so if we go to our fixtures and presets here, I can go ahead and look at these fixtures and as an example, I can type 1 through 20, enter, and I get all the fixtures that are 1 through 20 selected. In this case, that's four fixtures. I can also use, besides the through command, the plus and minus commands as well. So just an example of that is I could do 1 plus 11 plus 21 through 33, enter, and I get this selection. And so when you need to get different groups of fixtures, different selections that aren't just in a straight row next to each other numerically, this is one way to do it. We can also go ahead and talk about working with our lights. So we'll grab our friends the darts here. I'm going to turn on highlight so we can see them. And then we've got a few ways that we can apply attributes. The first, actually, if we're working with intensity, turning off highlight, is we have intensity by default on the side encoder here. So we're able to turn that up and get intensity out of these lights. We also have it by default. Here on our little screen, we see intensity, and it's on our first encoder wheel. So we have it there as well. And then we can go down here through our different parameter groups, pan, tilt, color, gobo, beam, beam effects, beam effects, and framing. And we're able to, to see on our encoder wheels here on top of the console where our parameters are, which parameters we have selected. Just like we'd worked with intensity on the first side encoder, by default, we also have color temperature correction, focus, and zoom on the side encoders, and they don't change. If we select something like pan and tilt, and then tap twice at the top of the screen, we now see on our little screen the ability to work graphically with the attribute. So if I highlight these lights, and here I'm in pan and tilt, I'm in drag mode, I now can pan and tilt these lights at will. Awesome. We also have the ability to do a color picker in the same mode. So if we're in color, we double tap, we're going to get a color picker. I'm in highlight mode, so we don't see it. And so I'll bring these lights to full using the command line. That's another way to set intensity. Just typing at, typing the percentage value that you want, and it will apply those to the lights. Items like gobos also have the ability to double tap on the small screen and see our different gobo options. Then let's go ahead and look at this on the main screen. We also can find these tools if we pop up with this arrow, our encoders, and then pop out with this side arrow, our graphical view. So we can see our pan and tilt here. We can see our color wheel, color swatches for various gels, as well as for whatever attribute we have selected, we'll see the options in here. So for gobos, we've got all our gobos here. We can bring in our beam attributes, like our prism. That looks nice. And work with our control channels under beam effects. We can also use fanning through our selectors here. I'm going to clear here, bring in our fixtures, and highlight them so we can show you the fan tool. In Onyx, fanning works by, say I go, for example, to pan tilt because it's very visual, and then I go over to fanning on the right here on the small screen. So when we're working in Onyx, our regular parameters, the things that the lights actually do, are on the left side of the small screen, and on the right side are ways to modify those, such as effects and fanning. So I'll go to fanning here, 
And I can see if I pop it up on my screen, it's going to tell me I'm first fanning on pan. I want to work with tilt. And so all I do is press over on tilt, either on the screen or I could tap on the encoder or rotate it a little and then it's selected. Then I go to fanning. Now I'm working with tilt. Fanning has a graphical interface here. We can use the encoder wheels like so. And we see that it fans the lights from first to last of our selection order. Perfect. But there's a little more to fanning here as well. Across the top, we have the ability to change some options as to how it fans. So I'm going to press clear, which resets the fanning to zero, three point, and then I'm going to drag one of the points here. I'll clear it again, turn off mirror, and then I'm able to do a three point fan where I can set the variance off of the base that these fixtures are doing and I can make things lower or higher across as we go across the fixtures. This allows many different possibilities within your lighting rig so that fanning is not just offsetting lights at an arbitrary value but it allows you to get a lot of different variations or you can just put in the standard mirror two point which is what comes up first and work with fanning the standard way that you may be used to it working in other consoles. Clear twice as always and turn off highlight when you're done and that way we've got a fresh programmer ready to record. So let's go ahead and in our next video we're going to start recording some presets for our lights here on the NX2.